Hi, Canyon ISD family, coming to you today uh, to share with you our high school transition information. This is as we open the new West Plains High School and Randall Junior High, what does uh, what the uh, transition process look like? The uh, pieces of this meeting overview it will include attendance zones and construction update, uh, information about our current junior, because our current juniors have to have decisions to make at both Canyon High and Randall High School about uh, the possibility of them getting the opportunity to stay in the uh, same school next year, but that's only for juniors. And then we'll give you information about the underclassmen, and that would be today's uh, students in sixth grade through 10th grade um, as we move forward in, in uh, preparation for next year. Uh, then we'll talk about our transfer process and a little bit about staffing timeline and programs, and I'll share with you some important dates uh, as we close. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we do have this on our website, uh, but uh, uh, you can see the areas that, re that represent Canyon High School related to the district attendance zones. In the top right of the screen, you can see Randall High School. And then the top left of the screen, you can see uh, West Plains High School. And uh, if you zoom in, you can see a little bit better information about where those uh, actual cut lines are for the attendance zones. And um, what I want to share with you, the, the colored spots that are that are on the uh, map, they represent uh, either platted subdivisions or uh, housing subdivisions that are already uh, under construction and, and building homes and streets. And, and uh, so it just is an indication of where growth is happening in each of the areas of all three high schools. Again, the, the QR code or uh, the attendance boundaries are on our website at the uh, link that's there. Also West Plains High School, just to uh, verify where that location is, if you'll follow with me toward the bottom of the screen, you see Loop 335 Hollywood Road. Uh, you can also see where Bell Street is, and that's where Randall High School currently is. And then uh, moving to the left of the screen on Loop 335, uh, you can see where Heritage Hills Elementary is. And the current road turns up and turns into Sansi when it turns north. Uh, the dotted line represents where the new loop is being constructed, and it will be complete at least the area that we need for accessing West Plains High School, which is near the intersection of Helium Road and Arden Road. It's just north of Arden Road and it's under construction and it'll be ready in about a year. Uh, next, I'll turn it over to Heather Wilson, Assistant Superintendent of Business and Operations to share with you uh, more information about construction. Hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here today and listening in. And I wanted just to give you a brief update of some of the construction that we have going on at Canyon ISD. If you're in and about Canyon, you can see a lot of great things happening between the elementary schools, the new high school, expansion of Randall High School, updates to the G Randall Junior High, and of course, the building of West Plains High School. Uh, you can kind of see here on the screen, it's the new great entryway to Randall High School. It's going to face Bell Street, or it currently faces Bell Street, which is right off of I-27. You know exactly where you're going, and you can see it as you drive through town. On the right-hand side, it's the main corridor entryway for Randall High School. It's got an, a wonderful graphic that has all of the history of the great things that have happened at Randall High and the things that we are so most proud of. Uh, as we expanded that building to be able to hold that one single uh, Randall West to be able to hold 1,200 students, we had to expand certain places in the facility. One of those places is the cafeteria area. So you kind of see that on the left-hand side. That's a back wall in the cafeteria. It holds um, bar tops so that we can have charging stations and great a great atmosphere for our students. On the right-hand side is the College and Career Readiness Center. It's in the main corridor as well and uh, a great place for kids to go and prepare for their future and get them future ready. On the left-hand side, you've got an indoor turf facility. It's 8,000 square feet. It's not only for athletics in a sense, but our band, our cheerleaders can utilize this space. I've seen it being utilized a lot between days when it's raining outside, cold outside. The kids can come in here and, and continue to practice. On the right-hand side is a new wrestling that was in addition to the building as well. Not wrestling, excuse me. It's a new weight room that was in addition to the building as well and is ready for kids. On the left side, hand side here is a new choir room. It, the, the space used to be the band hall, but it's been upgraded into a choir facility. On the right hand side was an expansion to the building, which actually is the band hall. 
Okay, and so a couple of things that you're looking at here on the on the left hand side of your screen is a black box. It's where theater can have actual productions, have people come in, watch them perform, and then it can serve for a great backdrop to get them prepared for uh, their performances. On the right hand side is the secondary gym for the school. You can see a screen in the center of the, the facility. You can pull that down and that actually serves two gyms. So even when we split off and uh, Randall High becomes its own building, it will have three gyms that actually can uh, have competitions at one time. Okay, so this picture is our West Plains High School. This is a construction picture as of the middle of September. What you're looking at here on the left-hand side is in the instructional classrooms. And so there's two different levels of classroom space. And then as you follow to the right, you're going to look at the library. Of course, the entryway, the big... Uh, protruding section there that you see is the auditorium and in front of that is the band hall. Here's a larger view of that area. You can kind of see the whole complex laid out. So on the back side of the uh, picture that you're seeing to the left is tennis facility and that the little building in between it houses um, tennis uh, boys and girls tennis uh, locker rooms, as well as the softball and baseball locker rooms and concession stand restrooms for the public when they come to watch those events. On the right hand side, you can see far out there that turf field. This this facility, just like Randall, has an 8,000 indoor turf facility that can be utilized for our sports. And on, also attached to that is our field house for our outdoor other outdoor sports. And then you can kind of see on the far right hand side that turf field. Uh, it's going to be turf and a, a full track. This is the entry into the main gym. So you can kind of see it form. This will be the competition gym that you're looking here. You can also take this entrance into the, the new auditorium as well as the secondary gym as well. Um, to your left hand side or just a picture of the classrooms, you can see where we are to date. We've got the drop in ceiling, the LED lights, and then we've got our first coat of paint on. As soon as the trosso completes in the hallway, we'll be able to put the millwork and things in these classrooms. On the right hand side is the main staircase you see when you enter the facility. We can kind of envision uh, signing on the staircase as well as class pictures and other things. It's going to be a main focus of the campus. Behind that staircase is the instructional classrooms. Um, this whole building is built for, for uh, 1,200 students right now per classrooms, but the whole building is built for 1,600. So when we add on to the facility, we're going to be adding on to the back of the classrooms behind the staircase. On the opposite side of the staircase is our library, iConnect, um, the cafeteria, I mean the um, we're going to call it the market, but it's actually where you can go and get the coffee and things like that. So the feel is the same that you've got at Canyon High and at Randall. It's going to be repeated at this facility. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Robin Cranmer. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Heather. So let's talk about a few of the timelines we need to go through and the process that we're going to be taking uh, with our students that are currently juniors that have been affected by the timeline or by the boundary change and uh, some of the other information that you may want to know. So on September 10th, the district sent out the online commitment form. That went to the primary guardian's uh, email. If you have not received that, please let your campus know. That was sent to every junior that was affected by the boundary change. That decision allows the junior student to decide if they want to stay at their current campus for their senior year or if they want to transition to the new campus. On October 1st at four o'clock is the deadline to uh, turn that for me and it has to be submitted by October 1st at four o'clock p.m. That deadline is very specific. We will not take late entries. So if you do not submit your form before four o'clock uh, on October 1st, we will assume at that point you will be going to the campus you will be rezoned to. So the new campus you will be attending for your senior year. Please remember, all students that do not live in the attendance zone they are attending will not receive transportation. What that means is if you decide today that you are a, at Randall High School and you are going to be rezoned to attend West Plains High School, and you choose to stay at Randall for your senior year, you will not receive any type of transportation to school. You will be responsible for transportation. 
So let's talk about underclassmen. So we're talking about grades six through the 10th grade. Uh, what will happen with them? Do they have a choice? What does that look like? So underclassmen will all be zoned to the campus that they live in. So whatever the campus, whichever campus serves your home address is where your child will attend school next year. Is there a possibility for them to request a transfer? Yes, there is. There will be a transfer process. And so you may apply to transfer to another campus, but at this point, I want to tell you, it is unlikely that we may, that we will be able to uh, grant that transfer. It will all depend on enrollment at those campuses for the next school year, uh, growth in those areas, and then will we determine who could transfer into those campuses. So those approvals could come late, even up to the very beginning, right before school starts next year. So when does the transfer process open? How do, what does that look like? So we will have a portal that opens on January 3rd. You can go to that portal on www.canyonisd.net, which is our website, and uh, click on transfers and you can fill out the transfer request for your student. Uh, they will be time stamped, meaning as soon as you submit that, a date and a time is attached to that submittal. And we will go in first come, first serve basis. So if someone submits it before you, they will get the first opportunity to be able to transfer. And we're going to do that because uh, we may not be able to allow all transfers into the campus that they uh, are requesting. So it will be first come, first serve based on the time stamp that it is submitted. So looking at how we will approve those transfers, the first thing we do, and it's in our policy, is that CISD staff children always get first preference. If you work for Canyon ISD, those children will automatically, automatically be looked at first. After that, we will look at the timestamp and determine who can uh, be uh, added into a campus on a transfer, on a transfer or who cannot. Please note again that there are no guarantees whatsoever that a transfer will be approved. You may apply, but there are no guarantees. You will plan to attend the campus that you are zoned to where your house is located. And if that transfer goes through, we will let you know that, but it could be late, as I said, up to the week before school starts next year before those approvals are made. Mark scenario. Mark is a junior this year, currently lit and currently lives at Rand in the Randall High Attendance Zone, but he transfers to Canyon High School. Mark's residence is not affected by the new boundary line. So Mark will either go to Randall High, which is his home campus, that's where he lives, or he will apply for a transfer to return to Canyon High School his senior year. Now remember, projected enrollment numbers are gonna play a big factor in this. So it's unlikely that that transfer may be able to be approved, but you may apply and we will look at those transfers and decide first come first serve basis on who can go to that campus based on enrollment projections. Thanks Robin. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the staffing timeline. Um, in the spring of 2021, I had the honor of being named the principal at West Plains High School, and I get the privilege of uh, building a staff in uh, surrounding that school with uh, culture and community. And then we'll talk a little bit about Randall Junior High. Uh, Randall East is going through a little bit of a facelift right now, and they will be called Randall Junior High and will open in August of 2022 as well. And then so in October, that principal will be named. And then in November, uh, both West Plains High School and Randall Junior High will both be building their teams, uh, starting with the associate and assistant principals and counselors. We give HR a little bit of a break before we start rolling again in January, where we will hire boys uh, and girls athletic coordinator positions, a band director. Of course, these positions will be football, volleyball, basketball uh, at West Plains High School. And then continuing with fine arts in February, we will hire the choir director, the theater arts director, and the librarian, including an iConnect teacher for West Plains High School. And then from February on into that August start date, um, we will take a look at the uh, enrollment numbers and then start putting uh, some of those teaching staff in place with uh, support staffs as well. And the, the question we get asked the most is will West Plains have, and you can almost fill in the blank there, but what we want you guys to know is that uh, for our core courses, 
Mark Hamill is working with both sets of counselors from Randall High School and Canyon High School, and they're doing their best to have student choice sheets that mirror each other so that West Plains High School will look a lot like Canyon High School and Randall High School as far as student choice for classes. And that the same can be said for the fine arts and the athletics along with career and technology. Um, we're going to do our best at West Plains to make sure that we offer the same programs across the board from uh, Randall High School and the Canyon High School uh, fine arts, athletics, and career and technology. Dr. Flushi, I'm going to hand this back over to you. Thank you, Mr. Gomez. We appreciate that information. Um, moving forward, sharing with you important dates uh, that have occurred and that will be uh, coming up and we want all of our our parents and students to be aware of. So back in early September, our principals um, met with all the juniors that are in, that are impacted by the new boundaries. The important thing is to say those that are impacted. If the boundary change didn't, didn't cause you to change schools, then we don't consider you as impacted by the new boundaries. So, uh, but we did call in, <laughs> excuse me, the juniors, juniors who are met or who are impacted by the new boundaries in early September and met with them at, the, at each high school. Then uh, September 10th, the online commitment form was emailed out to all of the affected juniors who uh, the attendance zone is uh, causing them to change schools and uh, they get to have a choice, uh, but that does have to be submitted by this deadline on October 1st to submit the online form uh, for determining if they want to stay at their current high school at Randall High or Canyon High, or if the junior uh, student wants to uh, go ahead and move to uh, wherever their new attendance zone has them in place. It's October 1st at four o'clock and, and we won't take any late forms. So uh, be sure and note that date. Additional information, uh, January 3rd is an important date um, for all the students, particularly six through 10, uh, but all students on January 3rd will open the transfer portal. And um, as you learned earlier in this uh, video that uh, the transfer portal, por portal um, is going to be based on a first come first serve. And so we're gonna time and date stamp when uh, that online transfer form has been submitted, but they'll open up January 3rd, probably sometime that morning. And then a letter will be sent home to all junior high and high school students identifying the campus that they will attend uh, based on the new attendance zones in March, in March of 2022. In April of this coming school year or the end of this school year, uh, we'll be working on our online enrollment for the 22-23 school year. And so we'll encourage at that time, again, more communication will happen along the way, but but uh, that's when um, our uh, students in junior high and high school will actually be enrolling online uh, for the coming school year. Uh, more information also is um, through a frequently asked questions document. You're having a picture of our website. Uh, that is the Canyon ISD website. There's a frequently asked questions area and uh, we continue to update that. So if you have uh, viewed the frequently, frequently asked questions regarding uh, this transition process with the new high school and new junior high, then um, uh, go back to that periodically because we'll continue to update that as we receive questions from parents. I hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, if we can assist in any way, at all, as always, uh, call the school office or give us a call at the district office. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.